There's a recent movie called The King's Man, which is the third movie in the Kingsman franchise. Guessing from the box office, no one cared. My sibling and I watched the film and found it an unintentionally hilarious disaster. It was a film with great promise, but was marred by woke themes in it. More accurately, it was a great film that got taken over and forced to splice in awful woke agenda bullshit. I expect the same from Disney Star Wars, because both are under the same company. In short, I very much believe Disney Star Wars is screwed. Boba Fett is the latest example of Disney fumbling the Star Wars license. I know we have the cruise fiasco, but I don't really consider that important in the grand scheme of things. If we ended up having most of Disney Star Wars being good, then we wouldn't fear the Star Wars cruise being as painful of a burn as it is now. It would have been looked at as added corporate stuff that they just happen to be doing. In a perfect universe, I would like all the media to be great, but that's not the reality we live in, and I doubt we will get a chance for Disney Star Wars to course collect in the future. To understand this, I believe it's important to look again at how we got here. But instead of spending hours dissecting the empowering adventure, I would like to focus on a key aspect that isn't discussed too much. Lack of understanding. It's the lack of understanding that led to Disney to not have a plan for the sequel trilogy. When originally, for the original trilogy, George Lucas had a good skeleton plan idea of what he wanted. They followed what happened with the original trilogy, but didn't recognize that the reason why there were different directors wasn't for allowing for different creators on a, a new IP, but instead, for the original trilogy, it was due to George Lucas suffering health problems after finishing A New Hope. Problems that were caused by the stress and lack of confidence shared by everyone on the set of the original Star Wars film. It's the lack of understanding that led to them circling back to the setup for A New Hope instead of moving forward, and a component to why Luke and Han were planned to be shafted while Leia was supposed to be the big hero or have a major role for Episode 9. We likely would have got Leia facing down an angry Snoke instead of Palpatine because that was a last minute change made by J.J. Abrams, and Leia would be cut down to just sneakily killing the main baddie as he is too busy with Leia. I dare say that initial scenario I mentioned would have been potentially good, since we would have Leia dealing with someone who took away her only son. Why they didn't have more siblings so that they can add diversity is beyond me. Her brother and her husband from her, making for a compelling interaction. Which Disney would, let's be honest, screw it up since they can't do anything right. What I mean is, when it comes to those previous projects, I would assume some intentional sabotage letting the past die as they solidify their own original characters and ideas, like they're doing still, continuing this process till it's fully converted into... whatever Disney wants, I guess. Which begs the question, why not build your own sci-fi world in the first place and not lose so much money and gain so much headaches, converting it into something different? That way, we wouldn't be dealing with Boba Fett having a rush TV show pushed out the door way too early. This is the first project that I would say was more unintentionally bad rather than intentionally. But I would say it still has that resentment to the franchise permeating everything before this show. It's no secret that The Mandalorian Season 3 was delayed due to production problems centering around its lead. Meaning we went from a lead actor complaining about not being able to show his face enough to being too busy on The Last of Us TV show. In contrast, the actor for Boba Fett actively wants to keep the integrity of the character he plays and wants less speaking. Such an exciting contrast between different generation of actors. Makes you hopeful, doesn't it? I'll end this point with a question. How confident do you feel about the future of Disney Star Wars when the lead star of your flagship show is prioritizing other work and the showrunner is too busy to be present for filming? Seeing Luke Skywalker once again, acting like the Jedi Master we always wanted him to be, training baby Yoda, Grogu himself, uh, much as Yoda trained him, running through the forest with Grogu on his back, levitating things, uh, being wise, being still, uh, being wise, uh, being wise. 
Luke. Make a life-altering choice you can't take back, small child. Grogu shits himself. <laughs> <laughs> shits himself because he's an infant. <laughs> it might be a cut scene, you know? Like, but I think that would have happened at some point. You assume that he Make shits your in choice. his pants. Star Wars will be saved, they say. Catherine Kennedy has no power, they say. John Favreau will be in charge, and Dave Filoni will lead us to the promised land. They say... All these statements have been said in the hopes that Star Wars will be able to be steered into the right direction. But honestly, I don't see it. Not only do they lack the understanding of why Star Wars was a billion dollar franchise, but also how to make their own original ideas good. A fine comparison would be to look at the MCU in the lead up to Infinity War and Endgame. Most of us power through forgettable movies like Ant-Man and the Wasp in the hopes of a climax to the MCU. So what climax is there for Star Wars. We are still exclusively exploring two different time periods set in the past from the High Republic to the period between episodes 6 and 7 with the current Disney Plus shows. And through other media it's already confirmed that the High Republic and these Disney Plus shows are building up to events not significant enough to be even mentioned in anything else. Worse, they have to justify the events of these two time periods while also justifying why they aren't significant enough to affect other media. Skill that has not been proven to be from those managing Disney Star Wars. But by god do they know how to disrespect Star Wars at least. Speaking of disrespect, remember when Disney fired Gina Carano? If I was a betting man then I would wager Disney was waiting for any small opportunity to get rid of someone not in their club. So from that firing, why wouldn't Disney do it again? Anyone not fully into the Hollywood club would be scared back into line or start to move efforts into projects outside of Disney. Which explains why Jon Favreau was not on site for the filming of Boba Fett, despite being shown as revealed from an interview with Tamara Morrison. I remember, of course, Jon actually went away to Atlanta, so I rang Noah that night and I said, Noah, the scene tomorrow, I'm talking too much. This Boba doesn't talk this much. I'm Look, I've got all this, these paragraphs here. I think we should get rid of it. And Jon's gone to Atlanta, so don't tell him. And then next month, <laughs> everyone else, for that matter, staying will have no reason to change course due to no threat of being fired. So why expect anything major to change, or even improving at their job? Dave Filoni invented time travel to keep Ahsoka alive, and allowed the creation of the Zilla Beast, which was lightsaber proof. Can't wait for more sleeping material with Bad Batch season two. Something that he created himself. God, how do you make a show about an elite squad of clones boring and the very clones stupid at certain points? Don't worry, Star Wars is saved, guys, because people proven to be wrong many times said it would be. It's apparent, if you haven't figured it out by now, I have no love for Disney Star Wars. And this is advice from me to you not to give a shit either. The fact they are relying on the prequels to spike interest in the fandom and to encourage internet discussion is a great indication we are in the darkest timeline. So good we want to keep going with the fan service, but so cringe that we want to die. A state of limbo that libels hell itself. We aren't going to save Star Wars by just talking about it. We need to move on. Nothing kills a franchise faster than lack of discussion. Look at Hyperscape. The fact you don't know that game only supports my point. None of the current people in charge of making Star Wars under Disney are going to save it. Nor do they care. And anyone who cares has no power and is helplessly struggling to salvage something. And then next minute, <laughs> next minute that morning on set I get a call from Atlanta. Uh, John wants you to say all that dialogue, and he'll cut it out later. <laughs> so he was even keeping yeah. an eye on us way back, you know, from from all areas. But again, we 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 we, I had to start talking, I guess, otherwise uh, we had to fill in the gaps and give out a little bit of information. And right. Ming's such a wonderful person to to share my thoughts with too. So, uh, yeah. but yes, I think I did speak a bit too much in answer to your question. I know it hurts to walk away, but it's a part of growing up. Look beyond the two suns on that horizon and realize you need to get the hell off of Tatooine to realize your true potential. Because there's nothing left for us here. Hello, thank you guys for watching this video. I just wanted to 
make something that just airs out my concerns and feelings with current Star Wars. Personally, I've been mainly focusing on these projects on my YouTube channel and everything else rather than just bothering with Star Wars anymore. Personally, I feel it's pretty much a train wreck and I wanted to just share my thoughts on how personally I don't feel Star Wars will be saved at all unless Disney completely cleans house. So thank you all for watching and hopefully you guys can see updates on my next videos. I have a Twitter and yeah, that's all I got to say. Thank you.